Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining our monthly webinar for Evolve Electrical Users. Today, we are going over some of the new updates in version 6.4.3. We're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming Evolve Learning Platform and, of course, answering your questions. So if at any time <clears throat> that you have a question, please submit it through the Q&A function and we'll make sure uh, to get to those at the end. And if we don't have time to answer your questions, we'll uh, reach out uh, after the webinar and follow up through an email. This webinar is being recorded and we will forward the recording to all registrants. And you can always find uh, recordings and more demos on our YouTube channel. So make sure you're um, following us over there. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, I can pass it off um, to Alex Siebert, your customer success specialist. Awesome. Thanks, Marina. Um, so I know that we've uh, kind of gone over this uh, with a couple meetings in the past, but I just wanted to uh, share how to move licenses around overall. Um, so let me know when my screen is sharing. It looks like it's loading. Perfect. Awesome. So uh, to share a license or to delete a license, I just want to highlight uh, that you want to come over here to this ID column, click this drop down, and then hover over this license right here. Uh, trash can is going to appear. When you click this trash can, it puts it back into your license pool uh, for reassignment. So I'm going to uh, delete it off of my account and then to reassign uh, there's two ways that you can do that you can click here and go up to the action drop down and add a license this way or uh, you can go over here to these three dots on the right hand side you can click these add assign licenses click on the projects or bundles and then you would add the license that is needed and then always double check uh, just to make sure that that license has been assigned. Um, sometimes if you click off of the projects and bundles screen, uh, it'll close without assigning that license. So once again, to make sure that you have that license assigned, you come over here to this ID column, click this drop down, and then voila, the license is right there. Uh, the only reason I bring this up is that uh, we're still seeing some tickets of uh, users reaching out and saying, listen, we moved our license, uh, and now all of a sudden the person can't log in or uh, the license has disappeared. Um, that sometimes happens because uh, people will come over here and they'll click the delete thinking that deletes the license. Um, that actually deletes the user. Uh, so just make sure um, that you delete the license uh, this way, just so that way you can easily move those licenses around as opposed to uh, recreating a user. Uh, and if you do have any issues, any questions, uh, comments, concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm always here to help. And with that, I'll, uh, I'll pass it back over. I think I'm passing it over to Adam, correct? Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. All right, let me uh, switch screens here. All right, so uh, I want to go over the hotfix that was released last week. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, uh, but I'll just go through some of the release notes and talk about what some of these uh, changes or fixes were, and uh, then we can get on to some other things. Um, so I'll just start at the top, work my way down. Uh, the assign location prompt, uh, basically what that will be is when an element already has uh, a location assigned to it and it gets picked up by another location, it's gonna prompt you to say, which do you want? Um, you know, do you want to reassign it or leave it as is, um, basically. Uh, the place hanger control, this is the big one where if you notice with the 6.4 update, uh, some of the performance uh, on the place hangers uh, could have been affected. So when you go to the place hanger uh, dialog here, under the options tab, there's a checkbox here to create an unfiltered view. So this is what is happening in the 6.4 update by default, and this will be checked by default. Uh, what this does is when you're dealing with clash detection or um, attaching to structure, uh, if the elements are hidden, we don't detect it. So this kind of ensures that we get proper clash detection and structure 
detection um, if those elements aren't visible. So if that's not of concern, you'll read the tooltip here. Uh, this kind of just guarantees that we evaluate all the elements. Um, if you uncheck it, we can't guarantee we see all the elements, but it'll be a better performance. So if you're more concerned about the time it takes, uncheck that box and it'll be a little faster. Uh, package sheets allows uh, multiple direction elevation views. That was just kind of a minor uh, fix that, uh, that I overlooked. So uh, elevation views will work in packages. The rest of the items here are uh, probably a mix of uh, customer reported issues, uh, specific scenarios uh, that weren't working properly, um, specific to like bends and things like that. Um, so we made a bunch of improvements, fine tuning the smart bends. Um, I think there's a couple here also worth noting. Oh, um, oh, that doesn't. Yeah. Uh, the importing of points. Um, so this was uh, a, a good one where, when you would export a set of points and you modified your um, origin options, the import was not honoring this. Uh, so I think it was reverting back to internal origin. Um, or project based, I forget which one, I think it was internal origin. Uh, but now basically the import will honor the settings here. Um, so you can export, you know, and import the same values there. Um, the last one here, uh, the trapeze rod length, uh, this actually came up a few times. The, uh, the issue came when the bottom of the rod offset was changed. Um, so at a certain value, you would get thrown off. Um, so just it's come came up a few times, not too much, but just know that that was corrected. Uh, the rest of this stuff, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. It's nothing really I think I need to cover. OK, so um, as always, if you go to the downloads page, this is where you'll get the 643 installers um, and you can get the release note link right here. Um, so Marina mentioned the LMS. So our learning management system uh, is going to be launching or uh, kind of has launched already with uh, some people. Uh, you'll be getting more information through our in-app notifications and our emails uh, about this. But this is going to be available to all users and it'll consist of various topical courses um, going through Evolve features and uh, the tool sets. Um, and you'll be able to sign yourself up for the courses and watch through the videos, that type of thing. So um, hopefully this will be a big help for a lot of you to keep up with updates and as well as for new users coming on board. Um, so real excited about that. So on that topic, what I want to do um, is cover just a, a set of tools. And I think during the monthly calls, unless we have a lot of uh, new features or something to review. Um, we also want to provide, you know, some useful training topics or something about Evolve uh, so everybody can take away something as well. So I'm going to cover the uh, quick tool tool set here. Um, and then Jason Earl will jump in at the end and um, jump into another topic. So what I've created, and this is kind of on the same uh, topic of the learning management system where we're working on training models and videos and documentation and everything that falls under that. So I've set up a training model here that kind of allows you to have a pre-configured uh, scenario for each of the quick tools. So I'm just going to go through the exercise and talk about it, each one. Um, a lot of these are very straightforward, um, but they're very useful day-to-day -day modeling tools. So these tools are anybody that's modeling in Revit should be using uh, you know a few of these probably on a daily basis, I would think. All right, so we're going to start with copy elements, which is the upper button here. Um, I'm actually just going to go to a 3D view for this. Uh, just so we can see this here. Okay, so uh, basically the command is pretty simple. Um, actually, no, I think in 6.4 uh, we did just launch these 
uh, quick tip gifts that are embedded in there as well. So hopefully, I don't know if anybody notices those, uh, they're kind of useful, but they show you the kind of general workflow here. But basically you click the button, um, remember down on the bottom left, it's gonna tell you what the current step or process is. Uh, so we're gonna select the elements to copy. I'm gonna hit finish. So in this condition, um, the selection has multiple ends, right? So I have an end here and then an end here. Um, I can select which one that I want to be the reference end. So it's just telling you, please select the desired end or connection. I can hit OK. And then you'll see my filter um, just allows me to select one or the other. So I can go ahead and select the elbow. And then it's just a matter of clicking. Uh, in this case, I'm going across different sizes. So um, I want to, in this case, inherit size. Electrical, you're always going to do this, uh, I would think. Um, but you can transition, uh, depending on maybe you're doing cable tray or something uh, with reducers or something. But I'm just going to say inherit and hit OK. And then I can just work my way down the line. And copy the elements. Um, now, something to point out on the plan view, uh, if you're new to Evolve and the Ben families, we have the uh, object, uh, the extrusions on the end of the bends, they're little green or blue um, squares. Uh, those have multiple purposes, one of them being that they can use uh, for some alignment. So I can just use a standard revit alignment here and go ahead and align the backs of all my conduits uh, using the um, the flat side of the uh, snap face here of that square extrusion. Um, so just kind of another little quick way of aligning conduits in certain uh, scenarios here. All right, next one uh, to me is like probably one of the biggest uh, quick tools we have uh, is the multi trim. Um, so the workflow here, activate the button, basically you're going to select group one, group two, and it'll fill in the gap there. And notice that this consisted of, uh, man, say exactly, this consists of multiple sizes, um, typical workflow on why you would use this is oftentimes you're moving your way down a corridor or a pathway you kind of get your orientation and then you got to make a turn. So it's always common for someone to take a copy of those runs, rotate them, kind of, oops, rotate them, sorry. And then kind of move them wherever you have to position them. And then you can use your multi trim to kind of quickly grab and connect the elements. Uh, this will handle multi-tier and uh, whatnot. So very simple tool there, uh, easy to pick and click, uh, but very useful. So connect elements, um, this is going to be another useful one. Uh, for whatever reason, if things become disconnected or you're kind of moving things around and you're not, you're trying to just break apart uh, the connections, uh, this connect elements really helps bring them together. Um, once you activate the button, you basically will say, pick the element to move. So which one is moving? It's this one, and I want to bring it to here. And then I can just keep going through the process. Um, so oftentimes in Revit, depending on, you know, how much so, uh, a run's been modeled, off, you know, you can have these alignment issues where elevations are not quite aligned, and you're trying to make connections and draw con conduits to each other, and they don't connect. Uh, this connect elements works really well for that. Um, remove elements, again, another really easy tool here. Um, basically, can, uh, click the element uh, between the, the elements between the selected elements will be what's deleted. So if I'm just selecting this easy example here, elbow to elbow, it's just deleting everything in the middle. Um, if I had couplings in the middle. I could do something similar and say go to that straight and cut it down like that. 
um, but it'll remove all things in between the selection. Um, reconnect tool and, uh, well, I'll look at disconnect tool. I'll, I'll start with this one real quick. This is gonna be another really uh, easy one where you have a connected run and you're just trying to maybe pull something out. Um, you can click the button, click one or more elements and hit finish. And now I can pull that out. Uh, so it basically just breaks the actual connection right at the spot. Um, the reconnect tool, so I'll keep it in this state. Actually, I'll jump over here because I should have this set up. Um, the reconnect tool um, kind of can do the same thing. The way it's set up, it's very similar to connect uh, uh, elements, but it's intended to be used when there's small gaps between connectors. So you'll see like this has a small gap. Uh, this originated in mechanical where this occurs, occurs more often. I don't know how often in electrical, um, but you can uh, hit reconnect, grab your elements, hit finish. And if they fall within the tolerance, they'll connect. So that says zero. I don't know what my tolerance is set up. So my tolerance is zero. Um, so it wouldn't connect. So here it's the exercise is a one eighth tolerance, uh, which just means there's a little one eighth gap over here. So if I, again, if I select the reconnect tool and hit finish, you'll see now it connected 12 elements and it's connected. Um, these I pulled further apart. So again, they're not connected. Um, and if I try to reconnect these at the one eighth tolerance, nothing will be placed. Um, I'd have to bump up the tolerance to one inch for it to work. Now, uh, something interesting that was brought up, I saw um, somebody using this tool, not necessarily as it was intended, and I'll show what they were doing, uh, but you'll see now I have 12 connected. Um, what they were doing was actually using this as a connect tool. And so the tolerance was just set really high, you know, four feet, and you could make a selection like this, oops, can make a selection like that and hit finish and it will connect it. Um, so at the time the question was asked, why does this only go up to one inch? Um, the reason it goes up to only one inch is because it's intended to be very close connections that have a problem, um, not big ones, but you can set the tolerance certainly greater and use it like this. Um, I think I like the connect tool probably better than doing it that way, but it's a, it's a different way. Um, and it works. All right, so the next probably most useful tool here is the alignment tool. Uh, so I have a few different scenarios. Uh, what we have when you open the, uh, the dialog here is you have two options, uh, two separate panels here. The top one is for elevation. The bottom one is for spacing. Um, this tool was created, I, uh, when it was 2018, I think we were working off of, which didn't have a bottom elevation parameter at the time in Revit. So elevation was a lot more useful because um, you, could, but now you can change it a lot easier. But the elevation options can be by a, you know, aligned to a selected conduit, aligned to an edge of an element. Think of like a trapeze or something. Um, you could specify a specific value to set it to, um, or select a reference plane. Um, and of course, do top or bottom alignment. Uh, so um, these are straightforward. And again, there's many ways of aligning now vertically. So I'll just keep this one off and focus on the spacing. So my spacing, spacing options here are edge to edge, which defines the gap between the conduits. I have the dynamic spacing, which uh, evaluates by size. This size next to this size should have this space. And then you have equal spacing. So um, with an edge to edge spacing, we have a gap to set and a rounding to set. The gap is the distance between, the rounding is the center to center. Um, so let's zoom in here and take uh, some dimensions here and look at the results. So I'm gonna go ahead and do an edge to edge spacing. I'm going to zero this out and set a two inch gap. So the 
the uh, workflow for this is you pick the stationary conduit. This is going to stay. These are going to all get moved. And you'll see it sets a two inch gap there. But the center to center there is 3, 31, 30 seconds. Um, so if you're putting this into a pull box or actually wanting to give a measurement, I mean, that's just a 30 second, not a big deal, but it's not a nice round number. So if I want to set this to uh, the nearest half, the process will be it'll first set the two inch, then it's going to go to the nearest half. So the results should be four and a half inches. So again, stationary, the other one, and I have that four and a half. So that two inch gap is a minimum gap, and the rounding will increase the center to center. Uh, next, we have dynamic spacing. So I'll throw a few dimensions here. I should use my quick dimension tool. Um, so the dynamic spacing works off this uh, spacing chart and it's just evaluating size to size. So if you have an inch and a quarter with a three inch, you kind of follow the where they meet and that's the minimum center to center value of those two sizes. Um, now for additional options, you have a rounding option. So the current spacing by default is the nearest eighth. Um, I don't think there's a 16th or nearest eighth. Uh, so you could certainly set it to a uh, quarter or half inch, um, which would change, which would increase uh, these values to the nearest rounding value. Uh, then you have a padding. Now the padding is an additional value. So let's do a few of these just to go through it. So I'll keep these zeroed out and hit OK. Again, stationary and the rest. And I get these all spaced. Um, they're all bunched up, but they're basically matching this chart here. So now if I want to add an extra inch, I'm going to add an inch in between all of these um, to whatever is there now. So I'll hit OK and do the same. Click. So now I've just added an inch. You'll see some of the measurements are still down to the eighth. So this is where I could then say round to the nearest half, which now my results would be to the nearest half inch here. Um, so what I've done here is the padding adds a value to this and then the rounding increases to the next nearest number. Um, equal spacing is very straightforward. Set a value, select your elements. Don't do 12 feet, because that's ridiculous. I'll do one foot here. And there we go. So that one's a easy one. I note that the continuous alignment option here, this shows up in a few places. Um, what this will do, so say if I'm working down a scenario right here and I want to align it, well, the tool makes me have to align this, align this, and then align this um, deliberately because they may have different spacing requirements. Um, but this continuous alignment just allows you to kind of keep the tool active without this window popping up every time. So I could set an option here, hit OK, and now just work my way down the line and pick the ends that I want to keep and tighten up the, the rack. Um, so if you need, if you're constantly changing the options there, then you would want the dialog to keep coming up. Um, otherwise, continuous alignment just sets it in continuous mode. Um, the last couple tools here, uh, actually, I have uh, four tools here. I'm just jumping over to this panel here. Um, the set work plane tool. So let me just go here. So this tool is essentially the same exact tool as the set work plane, show work plane from the architecture tab. Uh, the only difference is it just bypasses the first dialog and it just goes right to selecting a surface. So I can come right here and select that surface. It'll display the work plane right there. So that's what the show work plane does, shows or hides it. Um, but the, the purpose of this tool is typically in 3D views or something when uh, you're trying to do some type of dimensioning um, and it's shooting off or you have to change directions 
so I can change the planes that I'm on and just try to quickly dimension some things here. Like that, like that. So I can kind of change the direction of the dimension line by changing my work plane. Um, so it's just a, again, it's a quick tool, just bypasses an extra click. Um, that's what it does. Now the rotate tools, uh, let me, here we go. So the X, Y, Z rotates are rotating um, elements, like any element in a project like X, Y, Z uh, rotation. Um, the set angle that's found under MEP rotate, this is the angle that it rotates at. Um, these are really, again, easy tools, probably very common. Um, great tools to hotkey. Uh, so you can certainly just come around and click a button. Um, but if you hotkey it, I don't know if I have my hotkey in there. No, I don't. There we go. Nope. Uh, but it's a great, I, I don't have my hotkey in there, uh, but it's a great set of options to hotkey. Um, this is actually, uh, you'll see that I have a couple of a box family and a strut family of uh, a common question um, for people new to evolve are the fact that most of our families are conduit fittings. Um, conduit fittings allow you to rotate kind of any direction you want here. Um, certain other Revit categories have limitations to that. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's still the case with like 23 and 24, but we build our families still four years back. So we're just now getting into 21 uh, with the families. Um, but kind of give some context there. Now the MEP rotate tool uh, is intended for connected uh, elements. So it'd be like a conduit run, um, not cable tray because it doesn't rotate. Uh, but the idea here would be if I had this elbow and straight, um, I could select the MEP rotate, grab those two elements, click finish, and it will rotate at the connector point. Um, so it's intended, you would have to have the entire group of elements selected. So again, if I wanted to spin these three elements around, um, I'd have to have all three. I can't just select the two here. Uh, right, so if I want to do MEP, I need to grab all three of those, and then I can, uh, well, sorry, I meant to grab all four of those. Be this one, this, this, and that, and then I can spin it around that way and keep spinning it. Uh, the last tool here will be the set level. So I'll just go to the section view here. Um, so this will do a few different things. So um, when I click the command and the dialog comes up, I basically can copy, move, or reassign. So copy is, is copy. So you just select the level you want to go to. You can specify the offset. When you hit OK, you select your elements, hit finish, and it copies up to the level. Uh, move would be same thing except for moving so same workflow grab and move them um, the last one would be reassigned so this would happen if um, you did a copy or something and your level was incorrect uh, so this is all set to level two let's just say it was level one here um, I could use the reassign tool and reassign it to level two. And now, oops. and now my elements are all level two. Um, so hopefully that was not too quick going through the quick tools. Uh, but again, these are tools I think that are everyday use tools. Um, let me just check the. Oh, yeah. Uh, these are everyday tools for modeling, uh, you know, general productivity tools. So hopefully um, everybody's finding use out of some of them. And uh, I think we'll leave it there. So 
I will hand it over to Jason to take the next one. Thanks, Adam. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen here. All right, so uh, today we're going to go over uh, SmartPen multi-trim and go through a few different scenarios with that. So SmartPen multi-trim is the idea that we can do a trim-like operation like you would with regular Revit, but instead we end up with a smart bend um, and we're able to handle more situations than just a regular 90. So I'm gonna start down here at the bottom of my screen. So I've got two conduits and what we have here is we'll create an offset. So what this tool can, can really allow you to do is to kind of open up a new flow for for modeling conduit. So instead of having to go, you know, in place and and draw a conduit and then, you know, down and over for each piece, what we can do is we can take our straight pieces and we can set them at the elevations or the locations that are needed anytime we need a kick or an offset. Um, so in that way, there's a lot less uh, finagling with the parameters of the smart bend families. Um, I know the kick can be challenging um, starting out, um, but this can uh, all but reduce the need to uh, to mess with those kick families. So we'll start here. This is just a simple offset. I'm going to go up to the button in the conduit bends group. I'm going to click on smart bend multi trim. And so at that point, I get prompted. I've always got a status message here in the bottom left. It gives me an idea of what to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first run to trim and then hit finish. And now it's asking me to select the second runs to trim extent. So I'm going to select what I want to connect to and hit finish. And so now that we see I have an offset family in here, and if we look at the properties, you'll notice it put in the offset two piece. So this family, uh, the two piece bend will place in for offsets. For kicks, you'll get the two piece kick. and you can leave it as it comes in. It will actually come in as a single uh, piece of conduit. If you want to enable the two-piece bend, you can enter that, and that will add the coupling and allow you to extend the bend to up to 20 feet. Now, if the distance is great enough that it'd be more than 10 feet, it will come in as a two-piece bend. So that's just an example of a simple offset. And so up here, I have a situation where I've got some conduits at a lower elevation, and then I'm turning a corner. And after my corner, I need to be at a higher elevation. So this is a pretty common uh, situation when going into rooms or turning down corridors. So what I've got here is I've got some conduit running, and then I just made a copy of it and rotated it and set my elevations of where I need it. So at this point, I can come up and click Smart Bend Multi Trim. I'll select my runs that I want to trim. And so you can select just one run or multiple runs uh, with this tool. So now that I've got my run selected, I'll hit finish. And then it's going to prompt me to select the second set of runs. So I'll select those and hit finish. And after a couple seconds of processing, we'll get our families placed in. All right, so now we've got our families placed in here. And at this point, um, we're only a step away from optimizing our bends here. So if I just want to extend these, I could come up and do optimize consume adjacent. And I'll select these bends. And now we've got uh, bends that we put in with a couple clicks, and then we also optimize them. So a uh, very quick process here with the smart bend multi trim when you're going to put in um, kicks or offsets. And so down here, I just have, these are at the same elevation. So in this case, I could just use my standard multi-trim in the Quick Tools tab. And now we have this run all connected up with some optimized kicks here. The last situation that I have here is actually a native Revit bend. So um, a lot of times when we get new customers, they say, hey, I've already got a model that was modeled using Revit content. Can I?" convert it to evolve? Well, yes, you can. Um, and that's what the shift functionality of this feature is. And so to use it, all you're going to do is you're going to hold down shift and you're going to click on the button while holding shift. 
And so any of the buttons on the ribbon where you see a little asterisk at the bottom left means that it has a shift function. And again, that's just holding shift while clicking on it. And in all the tooltips for these, if they have a shift functionality, it'll, um, it'll have a description of what it does. So I'm holding shift and I'm gonna click on smart button multi-trim. And now I'm gonna go look at my status prompt. So the first thing I see is select first conduit fitting, which will be the stationary end of the smart bend. So I'm gonna select this as my stationary. And then it says select second conduit fitting, which will be the pivot end of the smart bend. So I'm gonna select that here. And now I've got my smart bend in place. <clears throat> um, this can be good also for, you know, if you've got somebody who, you know, they've been drawing in Revit for 10 plus years and the uh, getting them to use the smart bends um, is proving difficult. Um, this tool, you know, they could still model in <clears throat> native Revit bends and then convert them as they go. And that can kind of ease the, the burden of integrating, you know, a new software. Um, and that's um, that's it for Smart Bend Multi Trim. Thank you, everybody. So uh, at this point, I'll go ahead and throw it back to Marina to close this out. Great, thanks so much, Jason. And I just want to ask um, last call if you have any questions. Now is a good time to get them in. Um, make sure to be following us on social media. Uh, particularly on YouTube, where we will post all the webinar recordings. Um, you can catch uh, not only these ones, but all the other ones that we offer. And um, more demonstrations are available on that page as well. Um, I see that someone has raised their hand. Um, so yeah, if you have a, a question, please go ahead and um, submit that. Um, but otherwise, Gary, we can reach out to you after the webinar. Great. Well, thanks again, folks. And uh, we appreciate you attending today. Uh, we'll be emailing out the recording. Thank you so much. And a oh, uh, uh, question just came in. Oh, wonderful. OK, great. Yep. So this I'll says. Go ahead and take that one. Thanks, yeah. All right, so uh, with the smart bend multi trim, how do you adjust the bend angles that it uses? The bend angles that it uses will be, um, it'll match what was drawn previously with Revit. However, it will round it to a standard angle. So if you drew something like, let's say you drew an offset and a section view, and you drew it at like 38 degrees, right? When the offset comes in, it's going to be at 45 degrees. However, if you drew it at 45 degrees or say 60, 30, 15, 22 and a half, your standard angles, it's going to come in at that angle. Great, looks like we have one more. Let's see, are the models right. Revit files used in the demo available to download? Adam, do you want to take we, that? Yeah, we could, well, um, your model and the model I used, we could make that available. Um, we could probably uh, just provide a link to download those files with the webinar. Uh, link when it goes out. Would that work, Marina? For you? Yeah, absolutely. I'll make sure um, to connect you with this person's contact information and we'll email that over. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thanks again, Adam, Jason, Alex, and the entire product and success team. And thanks to all the Evolve users for joining. We'll see you next month. Thanks, everyone.